let us. How do you deal with it when there are some doors that God can't get you in? I tell you that if it's the door that God can't get you in, that just means it ain't your door. I have just prophesied and given a word to 20 of y'all who act like you didn't get your word. The reason that the door didn't open for you, the reason that the opportunity didn't produce for you, the reason that it didn't work the way that you thought it should work even though you dotted every I and crossed every T was because that wasn't your door. When you touch your neighbor and say, cheer up, that door that wouldn't open, it wasn't your door. Not your door, your door. Yo, do, yo, do, yo, do, yo, do. Some doors that you were crying over that wouldn't open, uh, uh, they just wasn't your door. Uh, you prayed, you fasted, uh, you augmented and altered your life. Uh, you became who everybody told you you ought to be, uh, and still the door didn't open. Uh, God told me to tell about 25 of y'all that that wasn't your door. Uh, who am I preaching to in here right now? Uh, lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, that wasn't my door. Uh, and I refuse to cry over it another night. I refuse to lose rest, refuse to lose sleep. I refuse uh, uh, to toss and turn because it just wasn't my do Because what God has for me, uh, it is for me. Uh, and he's the God that has the ability to open my door. Uh, and when he opens my door, uh, no one can close my door. Let us adore him. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, say Emmanuel. I like that. Emmanuel. He's my Redeemer. He's my Savior. and peace be unto you from God our Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, our elder brother, our conquering King, our sovereign Savior, and our soon-to-return Messiah. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassions, they fail not. Um, his mercies are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness unto us. It's good to be alive, isn't it? And it's better to be alive and to be saved. And so we're grateful and we're thankful for the gift of life and new life that comes in Jesus Christ. The word of God says that in him was light and that light was the light of men. Hallelujah. He is my light. Will you tell your neighbor he is my light? We most certainly want to say hello and welcome all those who join us today uh, via streaming services from all around the world and all across this great nation of ours. Come on, let's thank God for our cyber family. Let's thank God for South Africa. Let's thank God for Australia and Taiwan. Let's thank God for Guam and Ghana. We thank God for you and thank God for my son and whom I'm well pleased. Our TCI member all the way in Costa Rica. Come on, let's thank God for Francisco. Friend, we see you. We love you, man. We can't wait to see you and your lovely family as you come to share with us. Most certainly we do honor and reverence uh, all of those who serve in leadership uh, in the TCI family, all of our elders, all of our ministers, all of our deacons, uh, wherever you serve. Thank God for those who serve in admin. Thank God for those who serve in uh, finance, all of our ushers, our greeters, our uh, security. We thank God for uh, audio tech and most certainly thank God for our worship and arts ministry. Come on, let's give God glory for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And let's thank God for that very fine and well able leader. Let's thank God for Lady T. Oh, she'll be out here in a minute. She back there getting refreshed. Today she looking like a Christmas tree cookie. And uh, we <laughs> don't laugh at me, Elder. Pray for me, please. And so we, we <laughs> well, she does. Y'all know, y'all listen. As soon as y'all leave here today, go to Harris Teeter and find some of them cookies they y'all know I'm right about it they got that you know that off-white 
and then they got them uh, that green cream and them, them. y'all know I'm talking right hallelujah you with me when you're right ain't it amen so uh, grateful and thankful for her and grateful for thankful for UTCI as a church family I am so uh, godly proud uh, to serve with you and to share with you uh, it is our vision for those of you who are who, who are visiting with us if you're visiting will you please wave at me if you are a visitor we have any visitors today hey sir good to see you hey ma'am good to see you. hey ma'am good to see you glad to see all of our visitors who share with us today come on let's thank God for our visitors TCI come on that's right hallelujah I promise y'all we don't bite thank God for you we we appreciate you and thank God for all of our visitors. It is our vision, uh, uh, our statement. We are the people that get to know God better. We're the people that get to know one another better. And we are the people that help the world to get to know God better through us. That is our goal. That is our objective. Our second tenet is that of fellowship. Uh, we're not just a gathering of believers. We're not just a church. We're a family. And we're grateful and thankful for uh, the sense and the spirit of family. Uh, that TCI exhibits on a consistent and a continual basis. Uh, yesterday, we, uh, we uh, eulogized and laid to rest Brother Harold Walker's father, and uh, it did my heart good, did my heart proud to see uh, uh, members of uh, TCI, our leaders, our deacons, our elder, um, and, and others to come and share in that time. Uh, love is what love does. And, uh, and for me, uh, it, is, it is an encouragement. It is a shot in the arm for me. It is a, a boost in my spirit uh, to see that we get the vision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, we, that we, we don't just talk it. We don't just talk about it. We be about it. And so for those of you who drove uh, over two hours uh, to share in that homegoing celebration, and it was a homegoing celebration, we appreciate you. And let me just say this. All over the course of these years where you have done so, uh, uh, TCI uh, showing and sharing love uh, it does not go unnoticed and I'm so appreciative and so thankful and so grateful for you give yourselves a hand give yourselves a hand I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see every visitor here but my best buddy is here my 96 year young cut buddy dad Tao is here with his dad good to see you Good to see you. That's my man now. Y'all y'all know me as Kevin Long, but I am Kevin Long Tao Adams. Wilson Greer. And all y'all last name. I'm everybody's family member. And so we're grateful and thankful. And I'm so glad that uh, I was about to catch a case, uh, but um, I, I didn't have to because she came back. Mother Adams is here, <laughs> back home, thank you. Now, wasn't I right, y'all? <laughs> Just know I was right. At Harris Teeter. <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't say food line. <laughs> they don't they don't have cookies at Whole Food. <laughs> I <laughs> for our visitors, please. I, I'm I'm tired, and so I just kind of talk kind of crazy when I'm tired. So y'all don't hold it against whoever invited you. I do act like I got, my daddy would say, act, act with some sense. I do act with some sense sometime. I want you to look at two places today, uh, and, and we're going to get into the word. First, I want you to look at the, the book of Isaiah, chapter number nine, and then we're going to go over to Luke, chapter number two. And uh, I'm, I'm just going pick to at, pick at the Luke text. I'm going to pick at both texts. So I'm not really going to preach. I'm just going to kind of pick at it and let y'all go home and, and do whatever y'all do on, uh, on Christmas Eve. Isaiah chapter number nine. You've heard this and read this many times before. It is a staple uh, during this time of season. Verse six. 
For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Somebody shout Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Somebody shout peace. He shall be called the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and his peace, there will be no end. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter number 2. Um, look with me at verse number 1. Very quickly, I'm going to read real fast. Tell him I'll call him back when I finish. Luke 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She gave, or she wrapped him in cloths talked about that last week placed him in a manger we talked about that last week because there was no guest room available for them let's pray father we thank you today and we praise you for this time we thank you for your word your word is record of our thought your thoughts towards us thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope um you said that your work would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish what you send it forth to do. What your mind has designed, what your heart desires, it will come to pass in our lives if we just trust you. So today we stand and declare that we trust in you with all of our hearts. We don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge you. And you promise you would direct our path. So today, Father, let revelation knowledge flow. Share your heart, reveal your mind. In any way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. Think through my mind, speak through my mouth, move through my body. That you might be glorified, that these your people might be edified, and that the enemy of our existence and the foe of our future, Satan himself, might be horrified. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and we boldly declare. The devil is defeated, God, you are exalted, in Jesus you are Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God, shout out hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Uh, he shall be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And um, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Will you tell somebody beside your neighbor, all I want for Christmas is peace. You may be seated in the presence of God. Good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, our first text for today is a divine promise that comes from the prophetic pen of the prophet Isaiah concerning the birth of of Christ. 400 years before his appearance, dad Tao on the scene, Isaiah says this of Jesus. For to us a child is born and for to us a son is given. The government uh, will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Somebody shout Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. He promises us that this Jesus would, uh, would have the government on his shoulders and the more the government of Jesus increase, the more his subjects or the citizens of his kingdom would experience peace. My brothers and my sisters, I thought it interesting that the issues that Isaiah says that Jesus would come to address and remedy are many of the very issues that exist in today's world. Hear these words again that the prophet speaks concerning Jesus. Unto us a child is born, a son is given, 
given and the government will be on his shoulders. So the first order, the first issue that Jesus comes to address is the issue of government and order. But then he goes on to say that not only will the government be up on his shoulders, he also says that he will be known as the wonderful counselor, which means that he does not just come to address government and order, but he also comes to address the issue of mental health. For he is the wonderful counselor. Then it says he is mighty God. Somebody else shout mighty God. As the mighty God, Jesus comes to address now the issue of God consciousness. You can call it religion. You can call it spirituality. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But the very reason that Jesus comes is to address an issue that all of us need to deal with. And that is the issue of the consciousness or the awareness that God does exist. I want to pick with that for a little minute because there are some people who say he doesn't. But the Bible says that a fool says in his heart there is no God. And so when we deal with this whole issue now of God consciousness, we must understand that Jesus comes to show you, watch this, that God exists, number one, but God is a God who exists not above you or outside of you, but he is Emmanuel. He is the God who exists with you. Somebody ought to shout God consciousness. But then the Bible says he is also known uh, not only as the mighty God, but the everlasting Father, which would suggest that Jesus comes to address, are y'all ready for this? He comes to address the issue of fatherlessness. That's what he comes to do. He comes to address the issue of, of fatherlessness, which is an, an issue uh, that plagues our society today. I'm going to come back and pick it up in a minute. And I thought that it was interesting that when he says he came to address government and order, mental health, God consciousness, and fatherlessness, we understand that when any of these things are allowed to be pervasive and prevailing presences in our lives, we will We'll never know true peace. Whenever we live our lives under some sort of uh, corrupt or dysfunctional government, when we have no order of God in our lives, when, when we find ourselves resisting, rejecting God's order for our lives, we will have no peace. Uh, when, when we, when we uh, go around acting like we don't have mental health issues, when we go around acting like stuff does not bother us, when we go around acting Acting like there are no deep-seated issues that we got to deal with and overcome, we will never have peace. I'm going to preach whether you say amen or not. When, 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 we, when we walk around acting like God is not God, that he is not the source of our strength, he is the strength of our lives. When, when we go around acting like God is a figment of our imagination, a creation of a narrative of someone who specializes in fairy tales, you can have no peace. Because somebody said to me, no God. God, no peace. In O oh God, in O oh peace. But no God, K N O W, no God, K N O W, no peace. If you know God, you know peace. Is there anybody in here besides me who has the testimony, I know God, so I know peace? Oh, God have mercy. Will you just testify to somebody around you? This might be the next to the last time I ask you, but just tell them, say, neighbor, I, I know God and I know peace. So it doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what's happening in my life. It doesn't matter what's happening in my environment because I know him. I, I know in whom I have believed, Lynn, and I 
am persuaded that he is able to keep me. Is there anybody in here who knows peace because you know God? I, 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 I didn't say that you were religiously perfect. I didn't say that you dot every I and cross every T. I didn't say that you do everything right. I didn't say you know everything there is to know, but there's one thing you do know. You know God, and because that, you know peace. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord, in this place. I know I'm right about it because when you read this narrative about this Christ, this coming Christ child, uh, the, 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 the uh, topic of peace, the theme of peace is recurring. It, 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 it is spoken over and over and over again. Isaiah calls him the prince of peace. Isaiah says that, uh, that there, will be, uh, there will be an increase of peace if we submit to his government. And here upon his birth, uh, we find the angelic choir uh, appearing uh, to some shepherds who are watching their sheep by night and they give us a preview of the end product of his presence. Y'all remember uh, in Luke chapter 2 later on in the chapter that I read uh, they appear to these shepherds and when they appear to the shepherds they say unto them glory to God in the highest. Peace on, on earth, peace, goodwill towards somebody ought to shout peace. That's all I want for Christmas is peace. That's all that, that's all I want. You ain't gotta rap nothing, you ain't gotta go uh, to Nordstrom's or ne Neiman Marcus to find anything for me. I just want peace. Somebody ought to shout, I just want peace. Now you ain't gotta order it on Amazon, you ain't gotta uh you ain't gotta order it uh, uh on any other, you ain't gotta go prime, Amazon, nobody, you ain't gotta go nowhere. All I want is peace. And and the peace that I have comes from knowing him. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. My brothers and my sisters, I want to suggest to us then that when we consider this concept of peace, we must consider that when it comes to government and order, our world is in constant unrest because we have shunned the government of God. Mental health uh, is pervasive in our society. Worldwide, due to COVID-19 pandemic, the number of anxiety and depressive disorders, they grew. Uh, depressive symptoms grew from a base of about 193 million people worldwide to 200 146 million, which is about 28% of all people living. Anxiety disorders grew from about 298 million people affected to 374 million, which is about a 25% increase uh, in mental health issues. My brothers and my sisters, I came to tell you that we need God, we need prayer, but we need therapy. Will you tell somebody beside you, we need therapy. We, 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 we need therapy. Fatherlessness, approximately 18.3 million children across America alone live without a father uh, in the home. That, that, that's about one in four children. 57.6% of black children 31.2% of Hispanic children and 20.7% uh, of white children are living absent of their biological fathers. Somebody ought to shout fatherlessness. We, we got to deal with the issues of society because unless we have this issue addressed and this issue uh, uh, remedied, we will continue to have no peace. All you have to do is read the news. All you got to do is listen to the report and you will see the effects of fatherlessness in our society. Uh, as a matter of fact, the prophet Malachi said something that's really interesting. 400, 700 years before God uh, uh, would, would speak again, but he says to Malachi, Malachi, I need you to tell my people uh, that uh, before I quit talking, I need y'all to understand I'm going to address the issue of fatherlessness. He said, he said in that day, he said, and before that great and mighty day, I will send the spirit of Elijah uh, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Unless we address the issues, I'm not speaking uh, I'm not speaking exclusively to men but I'm speaking especially to men right now. A 
unless there is a rise, unless there is a revolution, unless there is a revival of fathering and mentoring in our society, we will know no peace. Unless young men and young women have the influence of fathers in their lives, because uh, society will continue to go awry and continue to go astray. But I believe that there are a group of men, I believe that there is a, 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 a there's a remnant of males who are willing to step up to the plate and say I may not have sired you but I can mentor you I may not have sired you but I can help you I can teach you I can train you somebody ought to shout yes Lord in this place Oh, my brothers and my sisters, well, before discussing what peace is, we must discuss what peace isn't. Let me say that again. Somebody ought to shout peace. And before we talk about what peace is, Mama Killings, we got to talk about what peace isn't. Y'all ready for it? Uh, number one, peace is not the absence of conflict. Number two, peace is not the avoidance of conflict. And number three, peace is not the acceptance of conflict without resolution. I think I need to say that again. Here's what peace ain't. Peace ain't the absence of conflict. It ain't avoiding conflict. It ain't accepting conflict without resolution. It's not just leaving things the way they are without dealing with them. But peace, according to Dr. Martin Luther King says, is not the absence of conflict, but it is the ability to cope with conflict. Let me say that again. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but it is the ability to cope with conflict. Translation, we can't truly know real peace unless we confront the conflicts and sometimes the contradictions that exist in our own lives. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. I can't know peace without conflict. I cannot know peace unless there is something that is antithetical in my life that I have to overcome. I cannot know peace unless there is something that is contradictory to what God would have me to be and I face it head on and I overcome it. I came to talk to somebody today to tell you that the peace that you want is not a peace that's not going to, that's going to drop out of the sky. A peace that you want is not a peace that's going to come with easy waters and beds of roses but the peace that you really want is the peace that will cause you to stand flat footed and face face to face eye to eye with whatever it is that stands in between you and experiencing everything that God has for you is there anybody in here besides me who says this message is for me all I want for Christmas is peace and in order to get it I gotta face every conflict that I'm dealing with in my is there anybody in here tired of not living in peace is there anybody in here tired of not living with peace is there anybody who's tired of not living from a place of peace if I'm talking to you lift your hands open your mouth and shout all I want for Christmas is peace well I want you to look now at the text because the text says something really interesting the text says in Luke that the birth of Jesus happened on this wise. It says in those days, somebody shout those days. In those days, Caesar Augustus entered a, a decree uh, that census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this uh, was a time of taxation, watch this, where people would have to go to their hometowns, uh, their towns of patronage, and they would have to register themselves. I want you to understand this, because the God that we know, the God that we serve, God consciousness we talked about, is a God who is three things, four things actually. He is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, he is omniscient, and he is sovereign. He's everywhere at the same time. That's omnipresent. He is all powerful. That's omnipotent. He omni knows everything. That's uh, omniscience. And he's sovereign, which means he controls the movement of life. Isn't it interesting that Jesus is born, watch this, at a time that Jesus, God is well aware that will be a time of conflict or that is a time of conflict in the life of his people. 
Jesus is not born when everything is easy. Jesus is not born when everything is peaceful. Jesus is not born when everything is moving smoothly. Jesus is born in a time, watch this, where the people of God are oppressed. And the text says, somebody ought to shout, the text says, the text says Joseph had to go up to the city to register for his taxes. Here's what's really interesting about this, my brothers and my sisters. When he goes up to register, the city that he goes to is a city called Bethlehem, which is the city of David. I'm going to go back to that in a minute. He could not register where he was. He had to register in the place of his parentage, which is to suggest, my brothers and my sisters, that whenever God has you on a path for peace, he oftentimes will take you back to the root <laughs> take you back to the root of yourself take you back to the root of your issues take you back to the root of your conflicts take you back to the root of your problems is there anybody in here who has been on a quest watch this for peace and God has shown you that if you want this kind of peace you got to deal with some stuff that is deep seated deep rooted firmly entrenched in your life ah, if I'm preaching to you wave at me real fast I got it, I, 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 it that, that, that's what it says the Bible says that God purposed it somebody shout he purposed it God purposed it God planned it God positioned it so that when Jesus was born he had to be born in a time of darkness he had to be born in a time of conflict and the text says at this time somebody ought to shout at this time it, it says in those days what days what days I'm glad you asked that it was the days my brothers and my sisters that God had set into motion the plan to redeem mankind it was the time uh, that uh, it was the days that God announced the impossible to a young virgin girl and to an old barren woman it was the time when God was making promises to people that things were going to get better you remember in Luke chapter number one an angel appears uh, to Elizabeth and tells Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth you are going to have a son tells actually Zacharias you're going to have a son and a woman who was old and had said that it was over for her she conceived can I put a pin right there I, I need to talk to about 15 of y'all in here that the enemy is trying to say uh, time is too far gone and it's over for you the devil is a lie and he may not be talking to you about producing children he might be talking to you about producing a business producing a better life producing a new season producing a new era the devil is a lie it ain't never too late will you just tell somebody beside you it ain't never too late uh, and, and then you remember after he appears to, to, to Zechariah and, 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 and Elizabeth is impregnated, he appears then to Mary and says to Mary, Mary, you will conceive a child. And she says to him, Lord, how can it be? I've never known a man. But God wants her to understand that what I'm about to do in you, you don't need assistance from anybody else. I came to improve, I came to prophesy, I came to speak, I came to declare and decree to somebody that the enemy's trying to tell you don't know enough you ain't been far enough you you don't have enough connections you don't have enough experience you don't have enough anything of what it takes to be what God has told you to be I came to tell you the devil is a lie will you just tell your neighbor let me encourage you huh? let me tell you that whatever God has placed in your heart if God said it it is so if God said it it will come to pass and even when you don't have experience even when you don't have connections even when you don't have know how even when you don't have what it would take in the natural to produce whatever God said if God said it you can bank on it will you touch somebody and say go with God in this season I don't care what the opinions of people are I don't care what the experts say I don't care what anybody would try to challenge you on concerning what God has said by way of your vision if God said it it is so lift your hand and shout it is so I could really drop the mic right now if Ira was out here I might just go ahead and tune up because I came to speak to you and tell you that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent if he said it he'll do it if he spoke it he'll bring it to pass and when he spoke it to you he knew you didn't have experience when he spoke it to you he knew you didn't have the pedigree if he spoke it to you he knew you did not have the connection but it's still so lift your hands open your mouth and shout it's still so
And in those days, when God was, <laughs> in those days, when God was promising a miraculous better, he drops Jesus in the lap of conflict. Oh, God. And he says, you are the Prince of Peace. But in order to prove it, you got to overcome the conflict. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, uh, there are a few things I want to tell you. And I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let y'all go. It's 1056. It's a little late. Um, but in order to have peace, number one, you might want to write this down if you're writing. Uh, you have to face what's oppressing you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Mama Adams, Mama Liz, Mama Clark, Mama Lynn, mothers, Mr. Neil, Dad Tao, y'all been living long enough to help me preach this. I said, in order, um, watch this, Phyllis. Um, in order to have peace, I got to face what's oppressing me. Um, I, 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 ain't, I ain't making this up. Text says, somebody shout, text says that when Jesus was born, it was in the day that the entire world was under the power of the Roman government. That Rome, in its debauchery, that Rome, in its darkness, that Rome, in its depravity, was the ruling power in the civilized world. And it was at that time that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, makes his appearance on the scene. I found my brothers and my sisters that every major move of God in your life begins in a season of darkness. Sometimes it is literal darkness. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number one, verse number one, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and what darkness was on the face of the earth. That when God is about to do something in your life, that when God is about to produce peace in your life, he will allow you to be in a season of dark chaos where things are out of control and unhinged. That he will always place you in a place wherein it seems like your life is coming apart at the seams. And what he does, is he causes you, watch this, to face it. Because as long as you run from it, you will never be able to overcome it. Here is my question to you. Um, 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 wh what conflict exists in your life that you must stop running from and face? What, what fears do you have? What apprehensions do you have? What, what, what uncertainties do you have? What, oh God, here's a good one. Uh, 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 what, what inclinations, what, uh, what, what attitudes, what mindsets do we have that in order to have real peace, we must stop running from it and face it. God, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Here it is. Jesus has dropped down into an oppressive Roman government. And watch this. His father, his earthly father, Joseph, must go to pay his taxes. God told me to tell about 15 of y'all that you are in a season of mustness. 
you, you, you are in a season that you can no longer act like it does not exist. You are in a season that you can no longer sweep it under the carpet. You are in a season that you can no longer turn a blind eye or a deaf ear to it. Uh, in order to have peace, you must face what is oppressing you. As a matter of fact, Jesus says something that's really interesting. Jesus tells us that the way to peace, uh, watch this, the way to make peace sometimes is to break peace. Yes, he said, I'm talking with y'all when we do or not. Yes, he said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Yes, he said it, but he also said, don't think that I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword and I came to set people and set situations and circumstance at odds with each other. In other words, I came to make you confront it. I came to make you face it. I came to make you deal with it. Is there anybody in here besides me who has ever had God to tell you we can't run from this no longer? We got to deal with it oh god every time you ask god to god give me peace and give me sweet sleep he said i'll give you the sleep if you deal with the issue oh god you ought to tell your neighbor say neighbor here is a secret to your peace deal with whatever is oppressing you deal with whatever is weighing you down deal with whatever is weighing you out deal with it don't avoid it don't run from it no more lift your hands and shout i gotta deal with it He said, we got to face what's oppressing us. I got to face what's oppressing me. You got to face with what's oppressing you. Peace is available only on the other side of confrontation. Number two. Um, whenever we are in ongoing conflict with others, it is because we're at continual conflict with ourselves. <laughs> if I really want to have peace, St. Dennis, if I really want to have peace, St. Adrian, if I want to have peace, saints of God, I got to realize that if ever I'm in conflict with somebody else, it is because I am ultimately in conflict with myself. So that the conflict that I must overcome is such a big problem. Watch this. Not because of what faces me, but because of who faces me in the mirror. I know I talked about this a few weeks ago, but I need to dig and delve with it a little further. Notice what the text says. Somebody else shot the text says. The text says that in order to go to the place where he will be positioned for the Christ child to be born, he can't stay in Nazareth. He got to go to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, according to the text, is known as the town of David. Watch this. Because Jacob was in David's bloodline. Now, that might not mean anything to you. Because the text would have us to know something that's interesting about finding peace. That he could not stay in Nazareth. <laughs> God had to uproot him. From his geographic location and take him to his biological beginning. And when he took him there, he took him to the city of David, who was a great king, but a dysfunctional father. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. So he uproots him and he takes him to Bethlehem. 
And he has to identify with his father, David. David, we know his story. But though he was anointed king, he also had some interpersonal issues uh, that were a detriment to his life until he dealt with them. David was as kinky as he was kingly. David operated in dominion, but he also lived in dysfunction. He's so dysfunctional that he would have another man's wife and to cover up what he's done, he set the man up to be killed. He's, he's so dysfunctional that the spirit of his predecessor Saul has fallen upon him and he's lifted up in pride. So much so that he decides against the advice of God and against the command of the, of the supreme and superior being of all creation to number Israel so uh, that he could see how much he had built and how great he was. And he has to deal with what we have to deal with. We have to deal, watch this, with the fact that whenever we are in conflict consistently with somebody else, it means that I am in conflict with myself. James asked the question. I know y'all didn't want to hear this on Christmas Eve, but I got to give it to let the Lord give it to me. James in James chapter number four asked a question. Where do wars come from among you? Come they not, watch this, from warrings on the inside of you. He says you, you, you war and you fight. You try to get, but you never have. You have not because you ask not. And then when you ask, you ask amiss so that whatever you're asking, Asking for you don't ask for God's glory but you ask it watch this so you can feed your own flesh feed your and now that you ain't getting it and now that you ain't at peace with yourself and now that you have not settled the issues of your own dysfunction you find yourself fighting with some the person where you want me to or not and the reason y'all fighting is because you got dysfunction in you that needs to be settled they got dysfunction in them that needs to be settled but nobody ever wants to deal with the stuff that's in them uh, so we keep projecting it on each other I'm preaching whether you want me to or not I came to tell you in this season if you gonna have peace settle it with deal with whatever is going on on the inside of you and I promise you that when you get to a place that you ain't in conflict with yourself uh, you won't even have to be in conflict with nobody else uh, will you lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord is there anybody in here who with me who says I'm ready to settle the conflict that's on the inside of me I'm ready to fix what's wrong in me I'm ready to change what's wrong in me because I found out that when I settle my internal wars I ain't got time to be at war with you lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord I gotta settle it I gotta settle it I got to get to the root of some stuff. And I'm not talking about getting to the root of stuff in you. I got to settle my own issue. I wish I had a witness in here. I got to fix my own stuff. I got to write my own course. I got to correct my own course. Will you lift your hands and shout, Lord, help me by the power of your grace to deal with anything that's in me that's not like you to deal with anything that's in me that's keeping me from becoming who you've created and called me to be God help me to have so much peace with me that no matter what's going on around me no matter what's hurled at me I can still declare this peace that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away lift your hands and shout yes Lord Number three, and I'm closing. Number three, true peace comes from a commitment 
to be content no matter the conditions. I'm done. Watch this sermon. Watch this Edison. Um, I said true peace comes from a commitment uh, to be content no matter the conditions. I ain't making it up. It's right here in the text. The text says, somebody else shot the text says. The text says something really interesting. The text says uh, that while they were in Bethlehem, while they were facing the oppression, God have mercy, while David or Joseph is in the city of his great, great, great grandfather, David, while he's dealing with the root of his own issues, the child is born. It would seem to me, if I were God, I would want my son to be born under the most comfortable and most uh, beautiful conditions on earth. But it just so happened that while they were there dealing with the oppression, dealing with the inward conflict, this is in my notes, I ain't had time to deal with it. But just because Joseph said, yeah, God, I believe that's your baby, don't mean that the enemy wasn't messing with his mind. <laughs> I'll deal with that later. Um, some of y'all got to understand that it is possible to believe God and still have questions. Are y'all okay? Uh, it's still okay to say, yes, Lord, I know it's your will. But to ask God, why? <laughs> and while they're there and all this is happening, the text says the time comes for her to deliver the baby. And to make matters worse, they go to the local inn, which is really a bed and breakfast. We'll call it an Airbnb. <laughs> and they go to check in. And when they go, the owner of the house says there's no room in the end. And now here are Joseph and his wife Mary who's carrying the Son of God. <laughs> God have mercy. At a door that they can't get in. How do you deal with it when there are some doors that God can't get you in? And I tell you that if it's the door that God can't get you in, that just means it ain't your door. Mm. I have just prophesied and given a word to 20 of y'all who act like you didn't get your word. The reason that the door didn't open for you, the reason that the opportunity didn't produce for you, the reason that it didn't work the way that you thought it should work even though you dotted every I and crossed every T was because that wasn't your door. Will you touch your neighbor and say, cheer up? 
that door that wouldn't open, it wasn't your door. Not, not your door, your door, your door, your door, your door, your door. Is there anybody right now, if, if, uh, if, uh, if, if, if uh, Ira would hit your key, if the drum would tune up, if, if, if Sean would start playing the beat, you would dance right now because you just got your revelation. Some doors that you were crying over that wouldn't open, uh, they just wasn't your door. You prayed, you fasted, you augmented and altered your life. You became who everybody told you you ought to be, and still the door didn't open. God told me to tell about 25 of y'all that that wasn't your door. Who am I preaching to in here right now? Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, that wasn't my door. And I refuse to cry over it another night. I refuse to lose rest, refuse to lose sleep. I refuse uh, uh, to toss and turn because it just wasn't my do- because what God has for me uh, it is for me uh, and he's the God that has the ability to open my door uh, and when he opens my door uh, no one can close my door lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord and so there was no room in the inn. but watch this the owner of the house said there's another door but it leads into a place where livestock where animals sleep and feed and if anybody knows anything about stables you know that stable animals they eat where they sleep but they also relieve themselves where they eat and sleep. Sometimes God has to sit you down in the middle of a mess to show you that peace is not dependent upon external environment, (laughs) but peace is an internal presence. And so the text says that there was no room in the inn, but the text also says that there is a stable there. There's a place out there. And if you can just go in there and stand the stench and stand the smell and stand the environment, perhaps whatever is in you will come out of you. I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not. And there with the horses with the mules, with the goats, with the sheep, with the donkeys. I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not. In the mench of the stench of animal flesh and the aroma of animal refuse, defecation and urine, the son of God was born. Y'all missing what I'm saying. The text was saying, or the point was this, you can have peace when you have a commitment, watch this, to be content no matter matter the conditions God does not need for conditions to be right around you to do in you and get out of you the very thing that he's placed in you come here Paul help me to preach the message Paul said I've learned that whatever state I'm in to be content I've learned how to be a fool and I've learned how to be hungry I've learned how to survive when I got a lot of money in my pocket and I've learned to survive when I've been broke I've learned to survive when I've had people around me who are supporting me and I've learned how to survive when I'm on by myself whatever state I'm in I've learned to be content hallelujah in here and when you touch your neighbor say neighbor when you got peace here is your testimony I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me I feel like preaching I feel like working I feel like lifting lifting him up tell me to preach tell me to work tell me to lift him up I believe I'll preach I believe I'll work I believe I'll lift him up the writer of Hebrews says you need to learn the power of contentment and if 
you got enough to eat and if you got a place to stay be content for the Bible declares that the Lord is my helper that will be my testimony will you tell your neighbor that say neighbor here is my testimony the Lord is my helper and you want to know why I'm content you want to know how I can stand no matter what's going on around me it's because the Lord is my helper touch three people testify today and tell them neighbor neighbor the Lord is my helper can I go I am I know I quoted a lot but I gotta do it one more time come here David your grandson great grandson Joseph is in a season a season of oppression he's in a season a season of darkness he's in a season where he and his wife are out there dealing with problems dealing with the issues dealing with heartache what would you tell your great 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 grandson Joseph David says I'll tell him the Lord is my shepherd I shall shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake
anything from your past that tries uh, to catch up with you uh, it gotta come uh, through goodness uh, and mercy touch your neighbor and say hey neighbor don't worry about your past God is standing he has your back don't worry don't worry about it yesterday God has your back don't worry don't worry about what they think what they say what they do God has your back and if God be for you who can who can who can who can who can who can be against you can I go higher I want to close here Joseph take the boy to Egypt hide him and keep him until I tell you the coast is clear some of y'all God has been hiding for this season but he's getting ready to tell you the coast is clear and it's time to come out come out of your hiding come out of your cave come out come out of your depression come out come out of your dysfunction because they that wanted to kill you God has taken care of it will you touch your neighbor and say neighbor I prophesy the words of Isaiah over your life no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper I came to tell somebody that no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon the enemy can't stop it hell can't block it darkness can't hinder it no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon Formed against you. Shout out. Happy Christmas Eve, y'all. Touch your neighbor and say, Happy Christmas Eve. You are on the eve. You are on the precipice of the thing that God promised manifestly. So shout now that you don't have it like you got it until you get it. Y'all miss what I said. You're on the eve of what God promised her. So shout now while you don't have it, like you already have it, until you get it. Somebody lift your hand. Somebody open your mouth and shout, 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 shout. Where my praises at? Where are my praises at? Where are my praises at? There was no room, but you were content. You've been making, making with well do. You've been making it with what you got, and because you've been faithful, God is getting ready to bless you with what He promised. Shout yeah! Will you tell the people, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I've been carrying this thing for long enough. I've had pain. I've had heartache. I've had heartbreak. But I'm ready for what God is doing in me to come out of me and bless me and my family, my bloodline, my friends. Hallelujah.
He's anointing your head with oil. Your cup is running over. 2024 is your season of your cup running over, 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 running over. I had you to wave your hand over your neighbor's head, but wave the hand over your own head and say, here comes my season of running over. <laughs> running over. Running over. Running over. Running over. Back in the back, running over. I just know that God is faithful yeah. and he's going to do it yeah. and with the key Elder Dewan in his time and in his season so you can have peace in this season real peace not counterfeit not peace because there's no conflict not peace because I avoid conflict not peace because I accept conflict without resolution real peace <laughs> because when I have internal peace that can only come from the indwelling presence of the God of peace. You know, I can be at peace with me while I'm in the process of being delivered. I can have peace while I'm working on me. The altar is open. And really, I'm just opening the altar to worship. Last week, I told y'all there was an exchange. <laughs> and when they saw the Christ child, they worshiped, and their treasures were open. There are treasures that are locked in you that God wants to unlock for your next season. The altar is open for those of you who want to worship with me. Watch this. Because the Bible says they worshiped and the treasures were open. Who will join me? Just here to worship. That's, I'll pray, but who will join me? I got, uh, I'm dealing with conflict, but I'm worshiping. Let me tell you this. The fact that you are admitting that you did that you conflicted is a step in the right direction. I hope y'all heard what I said. He 
trapped Jesus in darkness. I didn't even have time to deal with all this other stuff. We act like Jesus was all divine, but it was human. So can you imagine being a son who don't feel a real connection with the man that's raising you? I don't know, it ain't in the Bible, but I don't know if there's some point that Mary sat him down and said, son, I need to tell you something. Me and your daddy need to break some news to you. The reason all your other brothers and sisters look like Joseph and you don't. It's because you're not Joseph's biological son. Well, whose son am I? You're God's son. <laughs> I wonder what a 12-year-old's concept of God as father would be at that time. You ever been in a place and felt displaced? You ever been in a place and felt disconnected? Some of us call it being the black sheep of the family. Because sometimes they even have the same blood running warm in their veins. Y'all got the same DNA, but that's just something different about you. Here's why I love Jesus, because he had to deal with all that. And he's the oldest or the firstborn, and we don't know when Joseph died, but we know this. That by the time we see Jesus as an adult, we don't see his daddy nowhere. Which means now he got to bear the weight of being the man of the family. <laughs> I'm going to say this and we're going to worship. I'm getting ready to give you permission to let it all out. And I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody knows what it's like to be you. They don't know what it's like to deal with the weight you're dealing with. And they can have their opinions, but they ain't you. And you should never take criticism from the mouth of someone whose feet have not walked a mile in your shoes. I'm giving you permission at this altar to just let it all out. We have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was tempted in all points as we are. Jesus is the only person that knows what it feels like to be you. The only one, the only one, the only one, the only one, the only one. So just lift your hands and worship him, please. As we worship, we yield. Father, there's some stuff in us that is robbing us of our peace. Some things we need to deal with, some things. Some things that have been identified and things that are being unearthed right now. As the message was going forth, things were being unearthed in us. But we worship you. You the only one that will take our mess and exchange it for the exact opposite. So as we lift our hands and worship, we give all of that to you. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Now, Father, we give you our chaos, internal and external, in exchange for your peace. We give you our darkness in exchange for your light. We give it to you. We give you our failures in exchange for your success. <sighs> Thank you for taking it, Father. <sighs> Isaiah said himself bore our infirmities. He bore our weaknesses. He, he took our struggles. He took our pain. He took it. He took the pain. He took the shame. He took everything that was associated with the abuse, the molestation, the neglect. He took it all. Since he took that from you, take from him his grace, his mercy. Take it. Take it. Take it. Right now, receive his peace. I'm through this. That was the altar prayer. Receive his peace. Receive his peace. That's right. Just put one hand over your heart, one hand over your head and say, I, I receive your peace. Peace in my heart. Peace in my mind. I, I, I receive it. I'm getting ready to sing you back to your seat. Tim, watch this, son. What I didn't get to preach was the last part, and it was really the best part. Watch this, Elder. It says, and of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. Here's what that means. That the more you submit your life to him, And you can never submit who you're not. You can only submit who you are. And the more you say to him, okay, God, I'm a mess. I'm chaotic. I'm all that. But I'm placing my life, not just in your hand, but under your hand. The increase of his government and the increase of his peace will continue. You have more peace. <laughs> Amen. on a continual basis just just peace just just peace just peace that don't make no sense peace that will cause you to stop reacting in detrimental ways peace 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 that will not allow you to lower yourself to the level of the enemy, peace of the increase of his government. Did y'all catch that? And of his peace, there will no end. Experience. Imagine your most peaceful season. If you can remember back that far. <laughs> and hear God say, you're going to have more peace than that. As you just submit your life to me. <sighs> can I tell you all this and then you can go back to your seat. The most peaceful place is that place, that space 
where you realize that God is cool with you and you cool with him. No, no. He's cool with you as you are. What they criticize, he capitalizes on to make you better. Like, he's really that cool with you. He's really that cool with you. He's really that cool with you. And the increase of his government will start making you work on whatever needs to be fixed. Because the more you submit to him, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You know what grace is? It's God helping you to work on you. It ain't an excuse of behavior. It's God saying, okay, since you serious and honest with me, about that in your life I'm going to help you to work on it that's grace so I want y'all to enjoy tomorrow and start by enjoying the day cause the prince of peace was content to be born in a stinking, stuffy stable. Yeah. And he just stayed there. <laughs> Long enough for the wise men and for the shepherds to come see what peace and contentment looks like when it ain't going your way. When you're a king living like a peasant. <laughs> when you're a queen living like a servant. <laughs> you still got contentment. Because God is with you. And he's in you. I'm done. I'm sorry. Y'all go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Will you just tell somebody on your way back? This season you got peace. I prophesy peace over your life. I tell somebody beside you. I, I, I prophesy peace over your life. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anybody here today who does not know Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask everyone who can stand it. Please, ma'am, please, sir, stand. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can know him in the free pardon of your sin. I wonder how many of us ever consider the fact that on our birthday we like to receive gifts. Jesus is the same. Let me tell you the gift that he wants. He wants you. He wants you to accept what he has for you. God gave you his best and he wants you to accept it. Some of you today, you can know him in a free partner. You're saying, again, you know, I'm an ex-drug user. I'm an ex-drug dealer. I'm the chiefest of sinners. I'm the worst person I know because I'm the only person I know. Ain't nobody no worse than me. <laughs> but I'm saved by his grace. <laughs> that can be your testimony, too. You don't get cleaned up to get saved you get saved to get cleaned up.
And today, I ain't talking religion, I'm talking relationship. I ain't talking rules, I'm talking relationship. I ain't talking about thou shalt and thou shalt not laws. I'm talking about a love that far surpasses human love. You can have that if you accept Jesus Christ today. Here in this house, we pray a prayer together. We pray it in unison in support of those of you who may not have prayed this prayer and made the accept, accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So repeat this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity to give my life to you. I open my heart to you and I ask you to come into my life. I give you permission to be my Lord and I acknowledge you as my Savior. I make one confession for every sin that I've ever committed and every wrong that I've ever done. You said in your word, I confess my sins, you would forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, I accept your forgiveness. I thank you for forgiving me and I thank you for making me clean. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, with your presence, with your power, and with your mind that my life might come into the order that God has purposed me to have. Now, Father, I say in your presence, in the presence of your people, in the face of the devil himself, I'm saved, and I know that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my brothers and my sisters, the word of God says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. You won't be disappointed. Whosoever calls on the name, you shall be saved, protected, put together made whole and today if you prayed that prayer and you're in the building you prayed it for the first time we want to celebrate you we want to acknowledge you and let you know that you have a community that surrounds you so if that's you my brother my sister if you prayed that prayer sex with Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior today would you come would you come come on would you come is there anyone is there one is there one is there one while we're still clapping, you might say, you know what? I've given my life to Christ, but I don't have a church home. And I want to end this year. And I want to start the next year by being connected to a church family. If you believe that TCI is the place for you, would you please come? We're celebrating you now. Lady T and I, the leaders of TCI, would love to be those who cover you. Would you come? Come on, let's thank God. Come on, are there others? Will you come? Come on, come on, come on. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. God bless you. Come on, come on. Let's celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Come on, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping. There are others, would you come? There are others, would you please? Please, ma'am, please, sir, would you come? Today is your day. Today is your day, won't you come? Hallelujah, we want to celebrate you, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Timber, we ought to be raised in the roof. We ought to be lifting our voices. We ought to be giving God glory. Hallelujah. If you're watching there, and we want to acknowledge those of you in the great state of Ohio, in Toledo, and Cleveland, who've connected, to, <laughs> who, who've connected. As y'all can tell, Lady T got something for, for, for Ohio. Uh, those of you, Charmaine, we thank God for you. What's our uh, sister's name? In, what's our sister's name? In, uh, Rachel, what's, what's our sister's name in Toledo? Selena. Yeah, Sister Selena. Again, Francisco all the way in, uh, and his family all the way in Costa Rica. We're growing, y'all. I can't wait for TCI 2024. It's going to be phenomenal. 
I feel again so strongly that somebody, maybe it's, you're timid, maybe you're shy, but I promise if I see you moving, I'll come meet you. Being in the right place at the right time is the right thing to do. Is there anyone? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Y'all know I don't labor like this. Is there anyone else? If you're online, you can go to our website, tci-charlotte.com, fill out our new members form if uh, you are becoming a part of our church family, wherever you are. And if in fact you are, you've given your life to Christ, you can go to our website and you can fill out uh, our new converts form and we'll get in contact with you. Everybody saved, satisfied, and the right souls. Put those hands together. Hallelujah. We're literally getting ready to let you go. Did everyone have a chance to give in the offering? If you did not have a chance to give in the offering, please, sir, please, ma'am, raise your hand. Raise your hand and we'll get an envelope to you. If you don't give uh, in person, you can then give. We have one right here. Thank you. You can also give electronically. You can go to our website, tci-charlotte.com, uh, and uh, uh, you can text to give. Uh, by texting the word give g i v e to three three six eight nine one four zero two three uh you can cash app to give dollar sign church favor and if you're giving to the building fund you can give on our website but you can also uh, uh cash app to give dollar sign tci building fund but we appreciate you so greatly yes man um everybody had a chance to give Listen, Lady T and I and our family, you know, because oftentimes, you know, we don't talk about the boys, uh, but our, our, our family, uh, some who are here, I think Nick is here. Nick, you here today? He outside? He doing the work of the ministry, right? No, because when Nick was little, I used to have to go outside <laughs> he'd be outside playing with the, we're supposed to be in church um, but uh, Lady T and I and, and, and Nick and Aaron and Nolan and Princeton and Chanel and Donovan Chanel is in town uh, and uh, I was glad to have my baby girl here Donovan we all want to thank you uh, for me for the 27 years for Lady T uh, and uh, the bonus fellas uh, for the two years that you've been here supporting and loving us and we want you just to stop uh, out back we get ready to go right now Thank you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. We want, we want to just fellowship with you for a minute back here. We ain't got no cupcakes, <laughs> no red Kool-Aid. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> but we want you just to uh, come by and receive from us mm -hmm. our token of appreciation, our token of love, our token of thanks for you uh, for this time that you've shared with us. We're getting ready to uh, be, be dismissed. Father, we thank you today for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We thank you for your never ending love. We thank you, Jesus, for hanging on the cross, dying and shedding your blood. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ever abiding presence. Father, we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for sending him to the earth to identify with us in all of our struggles, all of our chaos, all of our problems. And we thank you for the promise that he is our peace. He is our joy. He is our all in all. And as we submit to your will for our lives, our peace will increase. Now, Father, I pray for these, your people, that they would enjoy this holiday more than they've enjoyed any others. Thank you, God, for healing the hearts and the souls of those who are dealing, God, with holiday blues and blahs. 
Help them to help them, God, to uh, find joy in the memory of loved ones who are no longer at the table but are always in their hearts. Now, beloved, remember you go along your way to render no one evil for evil, render everyone good for good, overcome evil with good, and render your all unto the Most High God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with you henceforth now forevermore. And I hope you with the prayer of the man of God. Said, Hallelujah, Amen, and thank you, Jesus. Will you tell somebody peace? Let us.